Hey guys, my name is Sean Owens and today I'm going to be showing you a couple different styles on how to hang drywall from the ceiling and on walls. All right, so a lot of people just want to hop right into it. They want to measure, cut, put it up, and just get it done. But there's a couple other steps that you got to do before you do that. Always scan the area that you're about to install the drywall on. So there's nothing worse than putting up a board, you're screwing everything off, and then you get to the end and you realize there's a nail sticking out of the stud. And then you either have to take the board down or just bash it up and just, you know, tape over it later. So just much easier to scan the area and make sure there's no more nails. Uh, I did find one right here. So we're just gonna take him out and now we're ready to measure and cut our first piece. All right, so we're ready to measure our first piece. So there's gonna be a couple different measurements that we take. Uh, we're gonna do our length as well as our width. So I've already checked this area. Normally what you wanna look for is, since the drywall boards are uh, four feet exactly, you wanna see if there's a spot that lands four feet so you don't have to rip that first piece. I don't have that in my case, you might, uh, but just double check everything. So my first piece is gonna be a rip. It's gonna to stop to here. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is I wanna measure a couple different spots. We have 39 and a half here to split this stud. And we have 39 and a half here. So that is our width. Length, depending on how long we're talking here, um, this is a little bit longer of a length. Uh, it's almost 10 feet. Uh, you can use a tape, but what happens is You'll get all the way out here, the tape will fall. Um, if you do end up, you know, spanning that and making it fine, there is another tool that you can use. It's a laser tape measure. So hop over here, hit the button. We have nine foot and five eighths. And then over here, nine foot three quarters. So my next thing is how long do you actually cut it? So what I just gave you, those measurements, those are the exact numbers. So what you wanna do, this isn't finished carpentry, so you want a little bit of gap to play with. So once you have the board up there, you're not you know, super tight and you can kinda of like jostle it around a little bit. So you split that stud and you're good. Because remember, we have drywall coming up here. So it, nothing, of the first boards don't have to be that tight. Um, and even if there is a little gap after both boards meet, it's okay, you're gonna tape it, you know, which you'll see in another video, but um, don't focus on making everything too tight. So you don't want that, it'll just make your life a little bit easier. Uh, as I mentioned, I have nine foot three quarters and nine foot five eighths. We're just gonna cut it nine feet, and that gives me some play to kind of move it back and forth and shift it around as needed. Uh, so that's the size that I'm actually gonna cut this to. All right, so the first style I'm gonna show you is very basic. You just need a tape measure, chalk line, and a knife. So let's do our first numbers. So we had 39 and a half, right? Go down here. Thirty-nine and a half. and a half. You can use a speed square if you want. Kind of run that over. Here's your chalk line. Put that right on your line. Sometimes this is a little easier if you have that, you know, full line from the speed square, and then just makes it a little easier to snap it. All right, now we need to cut our length. We're gonna make one mark on the top, one mark on the bottom. Right now we're gonna snap our second line. All right, so when you're cutting drywall, you don't have to go very deep. You're just scoring the paper and then you're gonna break the board. Just like that. All right, so here's the back of the board. All you have to do is score the paper in the back. 
Uh, it's easier to cut from the back because this is literally the only thing that's holding this piece on here. You can cut it from the front. It looks a little sloppy sometimes, but if you're in a tight room or whatever, you can cut from the front, but if you have the chance, I'm outside, so I have a lot of room, so I'm just gonna cut right from the back. All right, we got the same thing on this one. All right, so the next tool I wanna to show you is a rasp. It is optional, but if you're brand new at drywall, your cuts aren't gonna be that great. You're gonna be going up and down. So when you break the board, you're left with a really rocky edge. So it's just a really good habit to get into. You put the rasp on and just go back and forth. It, it's really quick and simple. It just knocks down that hard edge. It may be fine you know, if you're putting it up, but it's just a good habit to get into. Better to make it look clean here. When you put it up, there's no problem. All right, now we're ready to bring our board inside. All right, so before we hang the board, there's a couple more things that we have to do uh, to prep the board before it goes up. And I'm also gonna show you a little trick since I'm by myself uh, on how to actually hang this and just make your life a little bit easier. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is lay out where our ceiling joists are. So for this piece, we cut it 39 and a half here. So pretty much we have one ceiling joist going here. So we're just gonna snap one line on the board. So when we actually have this thing up, we'll know exactly uh, where to screw into. So I'm gonna go 16 and a quarter is gonna split that stud pretty well. All right, so another thing to keep in mind is where's the board actually gonna be placed? So the cut side, I wanna put against the wall, which is where I measured the 16 and a quarter off. This is the cut side. So we're gonna measure down 16 and a quarter. On both, you can use a speed square if you want. If not, you can put it right on the line. Okay, so this is where um, that ceiling joist is. So we're just going to uh, line up some screws before we actually put this thing up. So now that we have our line showing us where our ceiling joist is, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my drill and I'm gonna pre-drill these screws into the board. So when we actually lift it up, all the screws are already there and we just have to lift our drill up with our other free hand and actually screw it to the ceiling. I also wanna mention the type of screws that we're gonna be using today. So we're gonna be using inch and a quarter coarse thread drywall screws. So all the sheetrock that you see me install today is half inch. If you're using half inch sheetrock, you want inch and a quarter. If it's 5 eighths sheetrock, you want inch and 5 eighths. So, um, and make sure that they're coarse thread because we're gonna be going into wood. Uh, the other option is uh, fine thread screws, which are meant for metal studs. So. Um, the coarse thread screws have uh, thicker um, threads on them, so they actually go into the wood and stick a little bit better and, and, you know, instead of the fine thread, which is meant for metal. All right, and then in terms of screw placement, you want them between 8 to 12 inches apart, you know, somewhere around there. Remember, you're not driving them all the way in. You're just letting them stick into the board so that they're there for us when we actually put the board up. So I mentioned to you before that I was gonna show you a little trick if you're by yourself. Uh, if you have another person, just you're ready to go. Just start throwing the board up, screwing it off. Uh, if you're alone like me, what you could do is cut a little two by four scrap and you wanna place it on the wall 
Now I know the board thickness is a half inch. You don't want to make this a half inch. It's just going to be a pain in the ass when you're trying to get the actual board in there. Drop it down like an inch or so. You just need enough space for uh, the board to slip in there and for the two by four to actually hold the other end of the board as you start screwing it off. That's all you need. So this looks pretty good to me here. Screw it off. Now you're ready to go. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is the bit that I'm using to actually drive these screws in. You can use a regular Phillips bit. If you're new and a beginner, um, I recommend this. It's a drywall dimple bit. Uh, it's pretty much a Phillips with like a little cone around it, so the Phillips bit can't drive the screws all the way in, because once you break the paper, it's not really doing much. It's not gonna hold much, but you want your screws to look just like this. So let me show you how it works. We're gonna get right up here. That's perfect, right there. So we're just gonna do that with the other ones. You line that up. Perfect. All right, so using a regular drill with the dimple bit is definitely you know the cheapest option. Another option that you can do is use an actual drywall drill. So. I don't know how much drywall you're doing. I don't know if it's worth it for you to get a drill. They run, you know, a couple hundred bucks and then you got the battery. So uh, that's solely up to you. Um, I will show you how this works though. It's really nice, but just like with everything, there's pros and cons. So how this works is it has a um, pretty much a dimple bit built into it. And a, uh, one of the cons to me is, and it can be a pro, but uh, if you use it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you rev the trigger up, the Phillips bit does not move. It only moves when pressure is applied to it. So let me show you how it works. So it does work really well, but it just depends how much drywall you're doing, uh, personal preference. So. If you're just hanging a couple boards and you already have a drill, just get the dimple bit. It's much easier, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of drywall, it might be a good investment to make. I don't know, it's up to you, but I just wanna show you both ways. All right, so we're getting ready to put up our second board. Uh, what we have working to our advantage is the fact that we already installed that first board and now we're lining up directly in the center of that ceiling joist. If the framing was done correctly, uh, we don't have to rip that second board. We'll just butt it right on the taper joint, which I'll discuss in a minute, and we'll hop over and it should land right at four feet, but always check, make sure here. Four feet, Let's see down here, four feet, so we're good. So I still want you to measure the length. Uh, you never know with framing, it could, you know, twist a little bit, so uh, you don't know until you check it. So always check it, it's better to do that. And then, you know, as opposed to putting it up, it being too long, you bring it back outside, recut it, and you don't wanna do all that. So just measure the length again, make sure it's correct, and do all the steps that I just showed you for the first board, apply it to the second. I want you to move your board over if you're working by yourself, and just get ready to hang it. <laughs> Thank you.
So I wanted to wait on talking about taper joints and butt joints of the uh, drywall boards until you saw, you know, some of these up. Uh, it's a little easier to see what I'm talking about, but on every section of drywall, you have the tapered edges on the long uh, sides of the drywall. And I don't know if you could see it from the camera, uh, indents here and here. And what that is meant for is when we start taping these joints and you spread the compound in here and then you take your paper tape and run over here, it'll actually go inside that little indentation and then you can you know, flatten it out and smooth it out a little bit easier. So the reason why I ordered such large boards, I actually ordered 12 foot boards because this is a nine foot section. So I wanted to avoid the butt joints. So a butt joint is when the non-tapered side of the drywall butts next to each other. So there's no indentation. Obviously you could still tape it, but it requires a couple extra steps. You got to feather it out. It's a much wider uh, seam that you have to make with the compound. It's a little trickier. So uh, no matter how good you are though, it's always better just to get as many factory edges or tapered edges as you can. It's just a lot easier. You get a, you know much better results. And um, yeah, just always think about that when you're mapping everything out. So I have on the ceiling, I ran the boards this way and I was able to get all tapered joints. So there's gonna be no butt joints uh, in this ceiling. Uh, and I believe it's gonna be the same with the walls too. So sometimes if you're doing a really large area, whether you know the ceiling's really high or uh, the room's long and you know if it's like a big commercial building, it may be difficult to avoid butt joints you know, it is what it is, but um, do your best to, when you're mapping everything out, that the majority of your seams are tapered. All right, so we're gonna be doing a lot of different types of cuts in this room. I'm gonna start off with an easy one and work our way up to the more difficult ones. Biggest thing that you wanna do when you start installing drywall on the walls, you wanna kinda of see, you wanna start off with a full board because you don't wanna be doing a million cuts. So I framed this wall and I framed it so we can start here and land directly at four feet. So this is gonna be a full board so we don't have to rip it, but we do have to cut it. So what we wanna do now is take our measurements. We got 80 inches, 80 inches. That's not what I wanna cut it to though. I usually subtract a half inch from my cuts same principle that we were talking about with the ceiling. You don't want everything super tight because then you're fighting to get the board in and the board breaks and it just turns into a nightmare. So what we want to do is cut it a half inch short and then I take a pry bar, stick it underneath the board when we're about to install it. I lift it up tight to the ceiling and then I can screw it off. The half inch on the bottom, the, the gap doesn't matter. We have flooring, we have base molding. There's just a lot of stuff going on down there. So don't worry about it. Cut it a little bit short and make your life easier. And it's the same principle, uh, you know, when you start doing rips in the corner. So uh, <clears throat> our number was 80 inches. So on this one, we're gonna cut it 79 and a half and it's just gonna be full. So I mentioned earlier in the video, there's a couple different ways to cut drywall. I showed you before how we just made one mark on the top, one mark on the bottom, snapped the line and just took your blade and followed that chalk line right down and cut it. That's perfectly fine. Uh, other guys like using a tool called a T-square. This is what it looks like. Uh, with that technique, all you have to do is measure over, make one mark, put the T-square on that mark. Two things that you could do. You could take your knife right here and run it right down and then snap the board. You know your line is straight. Some people don't like having the blade that close to the T-square. They feel like they can't hold the T-square in, in place and then score it. 
Uh, so others will just make a mark, go down, and then with, with a pencil, and then they'll score the, the line. Same principle as the chalk line, but uh, whatever you're more comfortable with. So if you do have a T-square, I suggest you try both. Uh, just be careful with the knife and uh, yeah, do it that way. So here's what it looks like. All right, so now we're gonna do the same technique that we use for the ceiling. We're gonna lay out where our studs are and then snap a line. So when we go to put up the board, we're not blind, we know where everything is. Um, you don't necessarily have to pre-start the screws. You can if you want to. I only do that for the ceiling because you're holding up the whole board up there and you don't wanna be reaching down for screws. So that's why I did it that way. You can use that same method here. It really doesn't matter. So, you know, do whatever you feel more comfortable with. All right, so we got our board in, our lines are snapped, so we know where our studs are, everything's ready to go. I did mention a pry bar before. I use this little guy right here. You can use you know whatever you want, anything that'll actually get that sheetrock up tight to the ceiling. And so you wanna put it in place, just like this. Bring it over to that last stud right there. Pry bar goes on the bottom. You wanna push on that pry bar, see how it brings it tight to the ceiling? So we got there, so that looks good. And I know this wall is plumb, I framed it so I can, I don't need to throw a level on this or anything. Uh, I want to get one in here. Everything's good there. We're splitting that stud over there as we should. And then what I wanna do is line up down. Okay, so now we're perfectly plumb right here, so I can screw everything else off. I mentioned earlier, you can use this drill here. Or you also have the drywall drill option. So the drywall drill is much faster, but again, depends how much sheetrock you do. I wouldn't buy it for a couple boards, but if you're doing quite a few, it's I think it's a worthwhile investment. All right, so at this point in the video, you've seen me put up a few boards. You've seen the technique, you've seen the style. It can be a little monotonous if everything goes perfect, but uh, I wanna show you what can go wrong. So this is a perfect example of just an issue that we're gonna have to deal with and you may have to deal with as well. We have the same exact situation as the one that we just did. You measure over, you have your four feet, everything's good, four feet on both sides. If you do the vertical measurement, what do we got here, 80, same as the other one. Over here, we have 82 and a quarter. So, big difference. So, I don't wanna fill a two and a half inch gap if I cut it straight. So here's what I'm gonna do. We don't know if it's the ceiling or the floor or what. So if we just take a blind measurement, the floor could be going this way, ceiling could be going this way. We don't know what's going on. So what we're gonna do now is the fact that I know that this stud is plumb. I know this is good, right? So this is a factory edge right here, gonna go right up against this. What we're gonna do is take our level and we know we wanna touch here, right? So we wanna level this over and see right where the board ends, we're gonna measure two inches. So pretty much we have 80 inches here and 82. So what we're gonna do when we cut this piece of sheetrock, we're gonna do like a little taper. So it's gonna go up. So it's not gonna be straight. Um, you may run into that here and there, but you know, if it's, you know, a little bit, if it's a half inch, not a big deal, who cares? But 
if it's something like two, you are gonna have to taper the cut. So is what it is, it's a little more work, but um, I will show you how to do that right now. All right, so here's how you do the taper cut. I want you to picture this sheetrock, this piece of sheetrock already up and in place. This is the plum stud that I was talking about on the very end, and our number was 80 inches exactly. So remember, subtract a half inch. So we want to do 79 and a half here. So let's do 79 and a half. The other side was 82 inches. So subtract half inch, you have 81 and a half. Now, can't use the T-square here because that's going to be perfectly square unless you kick it over, but I prefer to use a chalk line, that first method that I showed you, on all the taper cuts. Just a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. Same principle here. Now, here's another example. You can cut from the front. I always say cut from the back, but picture, you know, we're in like a tight area. You can cut from the front. All you're doing is scoring the paper on the other side. And you get the same exact result. All right, so we brought our tapered piece in. It's the same exact installation process as the first one. So we got our gap at the top. Put your pry bar at the bottom. Step on the pry bar. Look at that, perfect. Perfect seam. So we're good there. Looks plumb. So here's the next tricky cut. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So we have a taper cut. I just threw the level on it. It's three quarters higher over here than it is here. Uh, we have a box for a sconce and an outlet and a window. So a lot of stuff going on, but what we're gonna do is simplify it. You guys already know how to do the taper cut. So I'm actually gonna cut that now. I'm gonna bring the board in and we're gonna take it one step at a time. All right, so I just brought the tapered cut in. So we know we're good here, right? It's gonna go tight just like the other one that we did. So now that we have our full board cut and we didn't have to rip it because it does land on a stud there. So why don't we do this one first? So we have a, a box right here. Same principle as every other board. You don't want everything super tight. So the exact number is 16 and a half by 19. I actually want to kick this over a little bit so I have some little, a little bit of room to uh, play around with. So I'm going to do about a quarter inch. I'm going to mark 16 and a quarter to 18 and three quarters. So we have 16 and a quarter to 18 and three quarters. So we're going to do that. We have that marked. Now, we know in this case our board is going to go tight to the ceiling, but again, we're going to leave it a little bit down, about a quarter inch. That brings us to, we do 20 and 3 eighths to 24 and 3 eighths. So we got 20 and 3 eighths to 24 and 3 eighths. So why don't we mark that on here on both sides, finish off our other ones. Quarter, and then 18 three quarters. Perfect. Now, you can see I'm starting to mark out my box here. And whenever you're doing marks on the drywall, even if you're cutting this out, um, use pencil. I've seen some guys use marker, and then when they go to paint, it bleeds through. So don't do that. All right, so here's our sconce, right? So we're going to cut this out. 
and then keep going with our other measurements. Uh, the next measurement is going to be the outlet, but I'm going to cut this out first and then go from there. All right, so the next tool I'm going to show you is called the keyhole saw. Uh, you can either use this tool, which is the most common, uh, pretty classic tool. Uh, you can use a flush cut saw, you can use a roto zip. There's a lot of stuff that you can use, but um, this is the cheapest and this is the one I'm going to be using today. So we're just going to cut around the perimeter of the box. So what you want to do, you want to get right in that corner, wiggle the knife back and forth, and you're just going to cut back and forth. couple things you could do here. Doesn't really matter, doesn't save you that much time. Guys like to talk about it, I'll just mention it in the video. You can continue doing what you just did, which is relatively quick, or what some guys like to do. If it's a, if it's a larger opening, it's, you know, this, it is quicker, but with a little box like this, it really doesn't matter, but you can cut it like you normally do the sheetrock. Go here, when you're done, and then he's out of the way. Or you can just finish it off with this, it doesn't really matter, do what you want. All right, so one of the next things that we have to deal with is the outlet. So what I want you to do, shut the power off, and I want you to loosen the screws holding the outlet in. I just like to kick it just like this, so when we actually put the piece of sheetrock up, um, we can uh, just go right around that, and then you know we don't have this outlet in our way. And as far as cutting goes, it's the same principle as we did up with the scones. So do the same thing, cut it out with a keyhole saw. And uh, after that, uh, we're ready to go. And I'll show you what to do around the window. Um, it's not as big of an ordeal as it looks. So uh, I'll show you that next. All right, so we're all ready to go. We're about to uh, put it up. I have both holes cut out. Uh, don't worry about the window right now uh, when it's up. Uh, and after everything's screwed off, we're just going to take the keyhole saw and cut all this right out instead of us measuring and hoping that we get it right. Uh, it's just a lot easier to cut this out in place. Alright, so the next step is cutting the window out, so grab your keyhole saw. You don't have to measure anything. So I want you to ride right on the uh, uh, sill and uh, you're gonna cut all the way over until you hit your jack stud here. Same thing over here. And then we're just gonna score it. All right, so now just to make it easier, we stopped here, we stopped at the bottom. It's a little quicker to score it. So what we're going to do, mark it out with the level, take your knife, and there you go. Now a good time to take your rasp and just clean up this edge. All right, another little trick I want to show you that could save you a little bit of time. Instead of marking uh, 1632, 1632, snapping a line here and there, uh, another thing that you can do, if the piece is small enough, it's easier to extend your tape out to 16 inches, put your pencil just like this, put your finger at the end of 16, and go right down. So 16, here's 32, then you have everything mapped out. So I've seen a lot of guys use that trick with knives too. What they do if you have to rip off say 12 inches uh, off of a board, what they'll do, they'll take their flat knife. This knife's not that great for it. They usually do like the low profile, like the thin knives, um, but they hold their tape just like this. So they have to rip off 12 inches. They ride right along the edge and they score it going down instead of 
doing the whole chalk line and snapping it and cutting. Uh, they'll just do that little uh, trick. It is a little more difficult to do. You do have to get used to it. That's why I didn't show you how to do it in this video, but uh, it is a nice little trick to uh, have in your arsenal. <laughs> All right, guys, well, that's the end of the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, hit like and subscribe. Uh, you can also check out my follow-up video to this one, how to tape drywall, and then there's one after that, how to do drywall patches. All right, thanks, guys.